dump up for Ukraine. America announcing an extra $400 million in funding this week. President Zelensky has also given Anthony Albanese a wish list as well. But where to from here? How does it all end? General David Petraeus ran America's war against terrorism, commanding the country's forces in both Iraq and Afghanistan. He was also the head of the CIA. He's now following the war in Europe extremely closely. In fact, his updates on LinkedIn are a must for anyone who's interested. His experience and insights are second to none, and he joins me now. General Petraeus, thank you so much for your time. Putin, is there any way he can end this disaster and survive? Well, I'm sure that's the big question that he's asking himself. Now, I think he still looks in the mirror, though, and sees not someone who made a horrifically bad decision for his country and for himself, uh, but rather someone who is a, a strong, determined, uh, a visionary leader who leads a people who have outsuffered Napoleon's armies and, and outsuffered the Nazis, and they think that they're going to outsuffer the Europeans, the Ukrainians, the Americans, and others. Neither side, I don't think at this point, uh, is at all inclined to negotiate. Uh, each side thinks that it, it is going to prevail over time. Uh, and so I think we're in for many more months of very tough fighting, noting that I think Russia is in a very difficult position, a very dire situation where Ukraine, a country less than one third their size and without all the energy and mineral wealth that Russia has, has managed to build an army that is bigger and more capable than Russian forces on Ukrainian soil, obviously with enormous help from the United States and the Western world. I'm not sure how Putin ultimately gets himself out of this. You know, history uh, shows that those who lose wars in, in Russia don't have particularly bright futures. It's a very good point you make, and, and you'd know this better than anyone. He's also taken on a country and an army that is fighting for something they actually believe in, fighting for their families, for their homes, for their survival. Hugely important point, Aaron. Um, and, and as the daughter of a soldier, you would probably appreciate that and give your dad my best, by the way. It was a privilege to soldier. But the Ukrainians, this is their war of independence. We can't overstate the stakes for them. Um, they are fighting for their very survival. The entire country has been mobilized. Uh, their president has proven to be a positively Churchillian uh, leader in all of this. He's got a very impressive chief of the general staff. Uh, and what they have done is beyond uh, impressive, beyond remarkable, really. Uh, I mean, this is right versus wrong in my mind. It's democracy, however imperfect, against autocracy or kleptocracy. Um, the stakes are very high, not just for Ukraine, uh, but also, I think, for the, the Western world writ large that cherish the values uh, that they're fighting for as well. Closer to home for you now, and the Heritage Foundation has released its report on the state of the U.S. military. Uh, pretty unflattering stuff. Could America right now win a war against either Russia or China? Well, first of all, I think that you have to, I, I think, accept that a war against uh, another great power uh, is a war that neither side can completely win. You know, the potential here is so devastatingly bad uh, that I, I have to fall back and say what we're all about is deterring conflict, particularly, of course, with a nuclear armed uh, superpower or great power. Uh, there's no way that these end well for either side. Uh, certainly, we have extraordinary capabilities. I think we could prevail, achieve our objectives, if you will, but the cost to all involved would be so substantial. And what we have to do is ensure that we demonstrate very clearly uh, that the two elements of deterrence uh, that are so important are very, very strong. And, and by that, I'm referring to the potential adversary's perception of our capabilities on the one hand and our willingness to employ them on the other. And there can never be any doubt in the mind of the adversary about those two elements. General, thank you so very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Can so I just have a last word by any chance, Aaron? Yeah, of course you can. The reason yeah. I'm doing this is not just because uh, your dad was a great mate uh, over the years, um, but it's really because I was uniquely privileged. Uh, I, think, I think possibly the only American 
military commander to command Australians in two different wars and then to work with them in other missions and then subsequently uh, to partner with your great intelligence services as well. Um, you know, we just celebrated, I think it was 100 years of mateship or something like that here in the United States. Uh, this is deeply personal to me. Uh, the diggers with whom I was privileged to serve over the years punched so far above their weight class that it was not funny. Uh, Australia was always there for us. Uh, uh, Air Chief Marshal Angus Houston, he said, just tell me what you need and I'll get it. I called him and I told him what I needed and he got it. I mean, it was again, all Australians should be exceedingly proud of their men and women who have worn the uniform of your country, particularly, frankly, uh, in the post 9-11 wars where they did far and away uh, extraordinarily well and where it was truly a privilege to serve with them. Well, you'll hear no argument from me on that. Beautifully said, and I'm sure it will mean a lot to all of the veterans and those currently serving watching right now. Thank you so much, sir. The privilege is mine. Thanks. Yeah, he's an impressive man, isn't he?